Hi guys, I'm the Michael Myers fanatic. I'm here today to review Halloween Resurrection. It was released on July 12th of 2002, but I did not get to see it until the following day, July 13th of that same year. Anyway, I watched it again recently, and I have to say that I have a love-hate relationship with it because sometimes I love it and sometimes I hate it. When I watched it last night, I don't know, for some reason, I really enjoyed it. I mean, for once, the movie was about Michael Myers again. Now, I know that a lot of you like H2O. I didn't. Because H2O was more about Laurie Strode. I get that she, she was attacked by her brother. I get all that. I'm not dismissing abuse. Not at all. But to me, H2O seemed more like a Lifetime special. Like when I looked at it, it looks like something you would see on Lifetime. Look at the way it was set up. She was like, oh, I was attacked by my brother. Now I'm in hiding in California. Okay, now, if she wanted it to go full circle, wouldn't it be in the place where it all started in Illinois? You would think so. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. The movie opens up with them playing the Halloween theme song. And then there's a voiceover of Lori, and she's going down this long tunnel, and she talks about how the tunnel is just like life. Everybody goes through a tunnel, and... Either at the end of the tunnel you either see heaven or you see hell. I guess for her it was hell because at the end of her tunnel was Michael Myers. And I really, now that I got a chance to just sit and listen to the dialogue, I love this movie. It's better than H2O. It's better than Halloween 4. It might even be better than six, in my opinion. Because for once, they talk completely about Michael Myers. That's what I want to hear about. I want to hear nothing but his name. Because that's what it should be about. And in Resurrection, they try to figure out what made, you know, what made him snap. And I think they even tried to allude to the fact that he might be slow or mentally retarded. And I don't have a problem with that. I have nothing against mentally retarded people. It's just that I don't think my favorite villain should be mentally retarded. If they make a movie and they decide that he's retarded, I'm done with the Halloween franchise. Seriously. I don't want a retarded serial killer. Leatherface is mentally retarded, but that's different. Leatherface is human. If Michael Myers is inhuman, why make him mentally retarded? Jason's inhuman, but he's a zombie. Michael Myers is on another level. Again, I'm getting off topic. Getting back to resurrection. Lori's in a mental institution now. It's October 31st, 2001, for anybody that wants to know. Three years ago in 1998, her brother tried to kill her again for the third time, and she faked her death She's no longer living in Haddonfield. She's living in Summer Glen, California. I don't get that. I guess Dr. Loomis set that up before he died. But she's living there, and Michael finds her, tries to kill her. She ends up killing the wrong guy. Now she's in the mental hospital. He tracks her down, stabs her, but not before killing two security guards. He stabs her lets her fall off the roof she gives him a kiss and says i'll see you in hell she also tells him i'm not afraid of you anymore you tried to scare me but you failed michael tries to trick her and make her think that it's not really him so she goes over tries to pull the mask off and that's when he pulls her tries to throw her off the roof he stabs her in the back and he lets her fall down and they said that as she was falling down, Michael stared coldly at her because he admired his handiwork. He admired the fact that he finally killed her after all those years. Then after he kills her, 
he pulls himself back onto the roof, goes back to the place where he met that guy that's obsessed with serial killers. He walks up to the guy, hands the guy the knife, and the guy looks at him and says, yes, that's right. If those of you that know me, you know I'm obsessed with this scene. He, Michael walks up to the guy and the guy says, Michael Myers, born October 19th, 1957, killed his older sister October 31st, 1963, killed three high school students October 31st, 1978, also killed three nurses and a paramedic the same night. He was believed to be dead, then he killed four students, Hillcrest Academy, 1998, has been missing, unheard of, last three years. Now he's back. After he says that, Michael takes off and he heads back to his hometown of Haddonfield, Illinois. It's a year later, October 31st, 2002. Michael's chilling at his crib, you know, just chilling. His work's finally done. He killed Lori, right? So you would think the reign of terror is over. But no, you're wrong. Buster Rhymes decides to break into Michael's house and launch this reality show called Dangertainment. This is where the fun really begins. They're running around the house trying to discover what makes Michael evil and they're having sex in his house. I don't know why people get turned on by having sex in the Myers house. I don't understand that. But then Michael gets all angry about it and he starts killing off the college students one by one. And there are many uh, different theories as to why Michael's doing this. Again, I want to say to the audience, I have nothing against mentally retarded people. Please don't start, you know, writing these, you know, giving me this nasty fan mail. I'm not against mentally retarded people. I don't think that a supernaturally satanic evil being should be mentally retarded. It doesn't fit. Don't the two go against each other anyway? If you're satanic, how can you be mentally retarded? It just, it, they cancel out each other to me. That's my only problem with it. I don't have a problem with mentally handicapped people. It just doesn't work in that kind of movie. So I hope that's not what you're trying to do. Another thing I loved about this movie is that I hated it at first, but I loved the fact that they tried to make Sarah Moyer, that's Bianca Kylie, they tried to say that maybe she might be related to Michael Myers, because she was acting like Laurie, and she was like quiet and repressed and stuff like that, and every time they ask her something, she sounds like she's on Zoloft, like they'd be like, hey Sarah, how you doing today? She'd be like, I'm not I'm feeling alright. I'm feeling so... I'm like, speak up! What are you talking like that for? Hey Sarah, how you doing? Are you coming to the party? I'm feeling so... I'm... Like, why are you talking like that? She, she was just weird. She acts like a Myers. Because those Myers people are quiet, believe me. I've studied the characters. They're really quiet people. They don't say a lot. Anyways... So she goes over to Bust Rhyme's house and she's like, oh, I don't think I want to do this. I'm scared. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to go to Michael Myers' house. And he's like, well, what do you mean you don't want to be famous? That's the American dream. Fear motivates. Fear gives you the feeling of being alive. And she says, fear makes me want to throw up. Again, I think it's just wonderful dialogue. I love the fact that Donna Chang, portrayed by Daisy McCracken, is it Daisy McCracken I think her name is? She says something like, uh, continuous means continuing uninterrupted, while continual means reoccurring periodically. I want to explain that definition to you people. Continuous means continuing uninterrupted. Continual means it continues, but it reoccurs periodically. And the funny thing about that is, that's the way Michael Myers' murders are. Like, when he kills, 
his murders don't go on and on. They reoccur periodically. Like every three years, every four years, he might kill somebody. So I don't know if that was just dialogue or were they putting that there for his sake. Anyway, they head to the house and like I said, Michael just starts killing them one by one. I love the fact that they had Michael Myers moving slowly and he was breathing really heavily. I can't really breathe into the microphone because I'm not really sitting up on it. But if I could put my mouth into the microphone, I would show you exactly how he breathes. Like, he goes like... I can't really do it because I'm not really up on the microphone, but you get the point. He breathes like really heavily and he's stalking them one by one. He moves very slowly and I like Resurrection now because now that I think about it, it feels more like a Halloween movie to me. H2O didn't. Resurrection actually felt like I was watching Halloween. Now that I think about it, I actually like the movie. I think they did a good job. After Michael gets done killing everyone, Buster Rhymes fights him, kicks him out of a window, but Michael's still alive. Michael stabs Sarah, and you think that she's dead, but she's not. Or not Sarah, but he stabs uh, Freddie Harris, portrayed by Buster Rhymes. And you think Freddy's dead, but he's not. And they've turned this whole thing into a reality show, as I stated earlier. Busta Rhymes takes this cable wire and, like, jams it into Michael's penis. Not to be gross, but that's what he did. And Michael makes this weird screeching noise. And he sets Michael on fire. Later on that night, they go outside the house. Michael is basically in the body bag and they're asking Buster Rhymes, you know, how do you feel about everything that went on inside the house? He gets angry, attacks one of the reporters. They take Michael off to the morgue and this idiot opens the body bag and Michael opens his eyes. Leaving you to think that there would be a sequel, but there wasn't because they decided to make Rob Zombie's Halloween instead. Now that I think about it, I actually like Resurrection. Because it was more about Michael Myers. I think this movie was more about Michael than any other Halloween movie. Even Six. I like Resurrection. And I was glad that he killed Jamie Lee Curtis. I just didn't think he would do it in the first 15 minutes. Michael survived in 2002. And nobody knows what happened to him after that. Because they did the two remakes. I'm the Michael Myers fanatic. I approve this message. Halloween Resurrection. From 2002. That's it. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen it, it's worth seeing. Jamie Lee Curtis makes her final Halloween appearance in Halloween Resurrection. Thank you. Love the title, by the way.